you are welcome to this session. This session is about art and design. Art and design is for senior one. As we get ready for the session, I want you to go and get your art book, your pencil, and your pen. And as you go to collect your materials, I want you to make sure that you have somewhere where you are going to sit. The one going to present to you this session is Deborah Rebecca Magera from National Curriculum Development Center. I want to remind you that we have to have our hands clean. We have to wash our hands for almost 20 seconds using clean water and soap so that we avoid the COVID-19. Go and collect your materials as I wait for you. Right, welcome back. Get your, get your seat and get ready to listen to this session. We are going to look at appreciation of art and design. You already see, even my wear, he's having some art and design, isn't it? We are going to look at the terms. We are going to look at the terms in art and design. These are the terms. Have your, your art book open and have your pen ready to write. We want to think about these terms. What is art? What is design? What is art making? What is art response? And of course, what is involved in design language? You can write those five questions in your art book and that you can quickly think of the right definition you could give to these terms. Good. I know you've written down something. Let's look at what each of them stands for because I also tried to think of what these terms stand for. The first one, Art, it refers to a beautiful way of doing things. For example, if you are going to make your bed, you have to think of how you want to have your bed look beautiful. You may, de you may decide to have your bed sheets all spread on the bed. You can decide to have your blanket in a position so that it looks beautiful. Let's look at the other, this other term. The other term is design. It refers to plan to do something. Because before you really think of having your bed made, you have to plan how do you want your bed. So the design is all to do with planning to do something with a specific purpose. It must have a purpose. Because if you think of folding your blanket, you are thinking of the time you come to sleep on the bed, how are you going to jump on the bed and quickly spread the blanket and cover yourself? So you have to plan. The other term is art making. Art making is to do with creating something. I have given you an example of making the bed. So you create something. And if you are going to create something, you look at now, let's look at our blanket. How are you going to create that, that design? How are you planning to make it? Are you going to fold it and make it in a triangle shape? Are you going to make it in a square shape? Are you going to fold it and fold it and fold it and fold it and it appears like a pillow? Let's look at the art response. The art response, this is to do with understanding and communicating in a clear way. Because the way you may make your bed will give a response. And that response, in a way, will make one understand what you are trying to communicate. That yes, the way the blanket is made, it means that any time jumps to bed will easily unfold the blanket. Hope you have those terms well-defined in your art book. 
let us look at the design language. The design language has three parts. It has the form, the color, and the concept. Let's think about them. The form is the composition of the fundamental elements of design. The color plays an important part of adding variety and the mood as well as spatial. Just look at my dress, for example. The composition in which it was made. You can look at the patterns. You can look at the color. The concept is the idea or thought behind a design. So the artists, the artists go through this and they find an artistic solution. Dear viewers, my dear learners, these are the terminologies which we shall always be coming across. Let us look at the importance of art and design. That's where we are going to next. Are we together? Yes, I know we are together. Well done. We are now going to look at the importance of art and design. Why do you think we need to learn art and design? Still get your pen and write down some reasons why you think art and design is important. Can you write down something? Good. At least write one or two points. Because I know art and design is, is something very important. Okay. Here I am with some of the points I too tried to write down. And in this activity, we are sharing why we study art and design. It is to develop creativity. To communicate using visuals. Because when we have visuals, it, it tells us more of what it's all about. It makes us understand about cultures. There are different cultures. If I talk about uh, the way the dancing is done, echitagururo, and I just talk about echitagururo, but when I show you the visual, you'll understand how the echitagururo is done. Isn't it? Yes. Good. Let's move on. It helps us connect our learning to the society. Remember, viewers, we are looking at the importance of art and design. I still say we shall add on more points when we are done with this session. Let's continue. We are trying to look at this area, appreciating art and design. Now, I want you to get ready to move from where you are and just look around, just look around and find an object. Pick it and what I want you to do is to list it down. Just three things you like about that object you will have picked. Let's have a short break as you pick that object. Mm -hmm. Good. Welcome back. Now, look at that object and list three things. If you, it, once you have that object, do you think there's something you would like to add on that object? Of course I know that you are appreciating the art that is on that object. What would you add on that object if you were given chance? I cannot hear the answer you are saying, but I believe because you have the fear of art, and design, you really feel that at, in that object you'd wish to add something. For instance, if you picked my dress, would you wish to add something on, on the design? If you were given chance? Right. Let's continue. Let us look at the roles 
of the basic elements of art and design. Art and design has the following elements. It has shape, it has line, it has color, it has texture, and it has value. So I want you to, again, have your book with you and write it down those five design elements of art and design. Write them down quickly. For example, if we are to look at the role of shape, the role of shape is, defines the boundary of a design. It defines the boundary of a design. For example, if you are going to, to shape your compound, you must have a boundary. Where do you want to plant the flowers? Where do you want to grow some small, small cabbages? Where do you want to have the pathway? That is part of the shape you are trying to shape. You are trying to define the boundaries. We can continue to look down at the roles of the rest of the elements of art and design. Line defines shapes and figures. Color defines the test. Today, if we are to look around and recall, when we go to events, for example, weddings, you find the bride has a color. Even the one who is going to make the cake asks, what color should I put for the cake? Even the one who is going to do the recording will ask, what are your colors? The test. Then the other element is the texture the smoothness and roughness. We look at the value. The value, its role is to check on the lightness and the darkness of the object. And then the other element is space. There must be space to avoid congestion in whatever is going to be drawn or made or designed. Having looked at the roles of the basic elements of art and design, which you have to always recall, that is the shape, the color, the texture, the value and space, let's look at the careers. Of course, some reference, you'll be watching a video, I'll go, I'm going to leave you that link and where you are able to get the access of an internet, you will, cl clip in, cl uh, you will click in that link and be able to look at some more notes on elements of art. But we are further continuing. We are further continuing. Let us look at the careers in art and design. In your art book, I want you to open a fresh page and you are going to draw three columns. The first column, you are going to label it art and dis art, art discipline. We shall remind ourselves what is all about art discipline. I remember when we were starting our art and design lesson, as soon as we started our senior one in term one, we were taken through the art discipline. And one of the art discipline we have the imaginative composition, we have the nature study, we have the living, we, we, have, uh, we have the composition. Let us look at them. We have still life drawing, we have nature, we have graphic design, we have construction and assembly. These are the six Art disciplines. Uh, still life. I want to start with still life. Uh, still life is where one has set maybe a basket of fruits 
and in the basket there are fruits of pineapple, purple, sugarcane, apples, um, watermelon, oranges. A basket full of fruits is put on the table. And there one is required to draw. Another one could be you are taken to a site and you look at the hills the way they are overlapping one, and one after the other, the trees, the sky, that's the landscape. So the career one undergoes for this becomes an artist. He becomes a landscaper. He becomes an envir environmental, environmental landscaper. He looks at this, the environment and designs something. So likewise, one who takes the discipline and specializes it in it in nature study. What is all about the nature? It's what we shall look at. What is all about the living person? What is all about the regional imaginative? We can deeply look at it. The nature study, still this looks at the way the animals live. It looks at the landscape, for example. One looks at a, a banana plantation when it is just uh, flowering, bringing out what is going to become a bunch of matoke and looks, uh, looks at it, then it draws. Looks at the sky and looks at the way the sun is rising. Looks at the color, the shading, the light and dark. Remember, we have looked at the basic elements of art and design. So someone who undergoes nature study becomes a painter, becomes, uh, uh, looks at the beauty and um, the cosmo cosmology, the living person. We believe the career would be a biologist, and so on. So furthermore, you will get to know if I take original imaginative composition, what do I become? If I take graphic design, what do I become? If I take construction and assembly, what do I become? Good. You will be writing most of this in your book, and you still do some research on what are the others. Today we look at fashion designers, we look at decorators, even one who makes a cake decorates the cake, and you see a, something very artistic. So, which of these careers would you like to be? I, for one, am an artist. I'm an artist, and I always design. So, in this session, we have looked at terminologies, we have looked at the importance of art and design, we have looked at the basic elements of, of art and design, and we have shared something to do with the careers. In the session, I kept on telling you that at the end of the session, you shall look for more information on the importance of art and design. We shall look at what are the other careers that exist if one takes these different disciplines we have looked at. That is the imaginative, the living person, the nature study, and so on. Dear listeners and dear learners, I want to remind you that we have to always wash our hands every 20 seconds. Wash the hands clean in between the fingers, clean. Wash them clean with clean soap and water. Keep safe, stay home. Goodbye.